Hallelujah. God is good. All right, again, good morning, all of you. Month of the Lord Church. All right. So my name is Pastor Christopher Kagala, and I'm a pastor here at the Month of the Lord Church in Murphy, Massachusetts, for those who are watching. So if you are in the area, you want to come to visit us, our service always every Sunday starts at 11 o'clock, but you can come earlier, 30 minutes earlier, so we can get to know you. So today, we are continuing our series in Joshua. Last week, we talked about Joshua chapter 7, how they be defeated because human nature. I want to explain to you why I say that. We all get used to the, the, the culture of when things are going well. We just focus on those moments of joy. We focus on those moments where we feel so good because things are working so well. And there are some times we forget about why we are where we are the, the source of our victory, we forget about it, until we face another giant struggle in the front, in the front of us, and we start wondering why. The question has been become, why we are going through this? Why are we supposed to be going through this? So, and we, we just take God for granted sometimes, and when you take God for granted, you forgot to seek yourself in the mirror as the source of the problem. So today, we are going to speak about God gives second chances. I want you to understand that where you are today, whether you feel so low or higher, God wants you to take you to another level. I want you to understand that when you serve Almighty God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Law, is always an opportunity to reach another level. You have to lift your, 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 your hope to that level. If you don't see it the way God sees you, then you will miss the whole point. God wants you to reach another level. So today is about Joshua chapter 8. And Joshua chapter 8, they have learned for their experience, I would say. And God's doing, trying to do something in their life. My things I want to let you know, in this life, you're going to go through tough moments. Things are going to be seem like, like uh, you don't understand it. This is uh, the way life is. When you find the, your, la your life in that moment and that situation, the first thing, lesson I will ask you to start learning from is, is to start seeing yourself in the mirror. How will you do that? It's simple. Ask God to show you. If you want to see yourself in the mirror about the situation you are going through before you start, you know, trying to blame everybody around you, trying to see yourself, God, why am I where I am, 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 am I right now? Why I have to be where I am with my situation? Because God always gives a second chances. Are you ready? for second chances. Verse 1 to 8. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and uh, attack Ai. Somebody, pe some people say Ai as Ai. For I have given you the king of Ai, his people, his town, and his land. You will destroy them as you destroy Jericho and its kings. 
But this time you may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourself, set an ambush beyond the town. If you think about, if you were here last week, you will see that there's some, God always have his way to teach us. That's why you don't just let your mind and the last only experience, but because God can have another way for you to apply in your life to have the success. You see, the time of Jericho, it was a miracle. God gave instruction to walk around the whole Jericho for seven days. And a miracle happened. But this time, it's not the same way. But God always wants to use them so they can get in possession of the land. Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you is, sometimes you may not see things work the same way it used to be. But do not be discouraged. If you trust God, really, and your heart and the heart and, and the right position, and you understand the God that you serve, knowing that He have His way that is not the way of man, He know how to bring you, bring to you some way so you can get to the place that you're supposed to be. So He say, no fear, because when you have fear. Most of the time, the fear comes when you feel like you are guilty about something. If you know that you're not guilty, you have not sinned against the Lord, so there's no way for you to have fear. So he started, he said, do not be afraid. Are you be afraid in your life? Is there something you feel like uh, it make you uncomfortable? You feel like uh, you, you are afraid? The Bible says, do not be afraid. Another word, another word, fear from the past. You may have a last, in the last week or in the moment in your life or in the past that make things so terrible. God saying to you today, it doesn't matter. I'm a God who's going to do a new things in your life. I'm a God who know you perfectly even before you come to see me. So I'm going to do a new things in your life. Do not be afraid. I think there are certain things in the Christian life we have to be content with. God's word is not man's word. His word is still the word of the Almighty God. And I believe that the problem we have many times because we are, have not allowed the Holy Spirit to cultivate that kind of faith in our spirit to the point where we just read the world the way we read the books. And we don't really take that world seriously. When God says something, he means it. And the second thing is not discouraged. Do not be discouraged. Are you being discouraged about something in your life? This is why he said to them, don't be discouraged. God will Remind his people that his plan will bring the victory. The plan of God always will bring the victory. The whole point is understand, know who's talking to you. Do you know your God? Do you know your creator? Do you understand that the same God that is saving you, helping you in the past, and the difficult part, that's the same God who will bring you through the situation you are going through today. So, not be discouraged. The victory is ours. God wants to have a victory in your life. God's favor toward Israel was restored, and he reassured Joshua that he is not forsaking him and the people. He told them clearly, and he repeated the word that God said to uh, Moses, Moses said to Kadesh when he sent uh, his people to spy, the 12th spy. And Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1, he said, He has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors. He just go. I give you the land. 
And Moses also said to Joshua before he passed, and Deuteronomy 31 8, he says something like this Do not be afraid or discouraged. So, the same word, what, what, what I'm learning from here is if God is telling his servant a certain word to encourage them, that means that there is always a way out. Uh, today we have been so challenged about our walk with the Lord. Are we believing the way those people believe? Are we still trusting the Lord that uh, the same God that helped these people is the same God that will help me today? Because we have to use the word and apply it. Now Moses in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 is saying to Joshua, do not be afraid and discouraged. God said the same thing to Joshua. Uh, Moses, before he died, said the same thing to Joshua. So the word is always be repeated, 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 repeated. I don't know about you, but when you serve God, sometimes you think about something. If you really, really you think that that thing you are thinking about is from God, ask God, he will show you. He will confirm. We always say, God with me, we have majority. And, you know, I, I heard things. Um, some, someone is joking. I don't know if it's a joke or was real. That in the church, they have a, a young man who saw a young lady. And uh, he went to the ladies and talked to the ladies saying, God told me that I have to go alongside together. And uh, the ladies look at him. He said, are you sure why God didn't talk to me? <laughs> so, another word, God can confirm things to you. That's why when you serve God, you don't just play game with and don't allow anybody to come with any kind of a, his, a story to, to play with you. God is a God that is speaker. He always going to use people. He's going to use you because his spirit dwells in you. Your power of his presence is always there to convict you of what he's going to do. So God loved the world the same way back then he loved the Israelites. And he revealed the plan. The plan before the actual plan of a battle was revealed to Joshua, he was told that the spoil and the land they are going to take over now it will become theirs. You see, in and, and, and Jericho, it wasn't the same thing. They said, anything you see there, you destroy everything. But whatever you see, like uh, all the precious things, is for the Lord. But here in the air, has not been the same. God have a way to show you things. What I'm learning from these things, you see the different part. God is doing the, 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 you landing in the place that you know God help you. But the process is always different. It has not been the same. So you and I today, we have to learn to, from that process. But the point is, are you have God as your foundation? Because if you have a God of your foundation, the Bible says, when the wind all the flood, everything come against you, you will stand in. You're going to be stand because your foundation is the Lord. But if you don't have any foundation, you are kind of people who just listen and you are happy about it. And uh, you don't put the word in practice. The Bible says, when those tribulations come against you, you will fail. And uh, you will feel like uh, God is not there and uh, God is not listening to you. So God reveals his plan. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he said that the part of success is already in front of you. He promised to turn the place of defeat into a place of victory. That the place, the same place that things has not worked for them, God said, go back in a different way because you, you listen to me and you will take that place, the victory in that place. 
So verse 9. The Bible says that Joshua and all the fighting men set out to attack Ai. Joshua chose 30,000 of his best warriors and sent them out at night. With this order, hide an ambush close behind the town and be ready for action. Verse 5. When our main army attack, the men of Ai will come out to fight and they did before and we will run away from them. We will let them chase us until we have drawn them away from the town. For they will say, the Israelites are running away from us as they did before. Then, while we are running from them, you will jump up from the ambush and take possession. This is another strategy right here. Possession of the town, for the Lord your God will give it to you. Set the town on fire, as the Lord has commanded, you have your order. So they left and went to the place of ambush between Bethel and the, the west side of Ai. But Joshua remained among the people in the camp that night. You see how God is doing these things. It's so powerful things. This is the stories that we learn. We have to keep learning from it. God already have a plan. It's not what happened in Jericho. He have another plan, normal plan, like a people who have to go to fight. So you have to trust God. Actually, when he said go fight, he already there with you. No matter how strong or trained you think you might be, when God gave the word, he's already in your side so that you can come back victorious. This is interesting to see how uh, he, the first group of valiant warriors were sent that night, by night. They all, the number is 30,000 people. They were sent by night. So the second contagion, they all walk by 15 miles from Galilee early the next morning and a camp and a plain view on the north side. You know, so they, they all know exactly what they are doing. And then the last one was the third one. The third contagion was another ambush numbering 5,000 men who were positioned between Bethel and Air. So everything was planned. Different way, model to take the land. Totally different from what happened in, in Jericho. We are God who knows how to take you from where you are. When everybody says, that's not the way we do things. Oh, we don't do things like this. If you trust the Lord, just follow what God's telling you to do. Almighty God, it doesn't just copy somebody's model so that you can follow to be successful. That's what we do in this culture, right? Somebody wake to a, a higher position, we look at it and say, oh, I want to be there. And you start to follow, copy, buy his book so you can be there. But the way God does his business is totally different. He said, trust me. I will bring you to the place that you are destined for. So trust God is one of the things I want you to get this sermon onto it. You listen. That's, you got to listen because we can receive counseling, but your counseling, where, to whom? From whom you are receiving the, your counseling from? You have to receive counseling from someone who knows the Lord. You know, we receive sometimes the counsel, but God can use anybody to counsel you. But I pray that the power, the spirit of God that is inside you will detect, will find out if the counseling you are receiving is from the Lord or not. So God have his way out. We see how the three contagion, Joshua pulled those people in a place so they can take in possession of AI. At the same time, Joshua himself, the Bible says in verse 26, that he hold on, Joshua holding up his spear, reminding as Moses hold up 
the hand of, uh, 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 of his staff. He holds his staff so that they can win the Amalekite. There's a power of holding something as a leader. When you are doing something, leadership is very important. You have to be there to encourage. Holding things is a way for encouraging those people that who are working for the kingdom of God. Holding despair. So the Israelites will continue to fight until they destroy completely the uh, air population. You see, this, this moment, it come to the moment where Joshua knew that God has been in their side. He knew that God has walked through them. God never let them down. With all the problems, the situation they have experienced, and the first time when they go against heirs, now restoration came in their life. This is the time they're going to do something special. They are going to take a, a great step. We call uh, the, the religious step or spiritual pilgrimage. That why, after the victory of I, Joshua led the Israel in the pilgrimage and a spiritual journey. He says, when you cross the Jordan, set up those stones at Mount Abel and coast them with a plaster and I will commend you to death. So another word, God saying, this is the time to worship me now. You know, when, when you are succeeding in life and the things are working so well, many times we forget about God. Now that they, this journey has been really so successful, even though, though they experience something that is so, you know, detrimental to them, God is trying to move them to the place of victory. And Moses now remember all the direction that they have received from, uh, from Moses. Joshua remember everything they received from uh, Moses. And now they will follow up everything. Deuteronomy 27, verse 4, now verse 5. Then build an altar there to the Lord your God, using natural uncut stones. You must not shape the stone with an iron tool. Build the altar of an uncut stone and use it to offer burnt offering to the Lord your God. Verse 7. Also sacrifice peace offering on it and celebrate by feasting there before the Lord your God. You must clearly write all this instruction in the stone coated with plaster. Those as the direction given by God himself to Moses. And Moses repeats this to Joshua before he passed. Now, they see the journey was so successful. They remember to give glory. They remember to worship the Lord. This is a, a time of uh, giving him glory. So what they do here, they have two groups. And those two groups, at a specific place, one group in a, a mountain of Abel, and another group is Gerizim. In the center, they have an Ark of the Covenant, surrendered by the priests, and they read the instruction, who is the commandment of the Lord. Those things is to declare to that land that that land belong to the Lord. Air and Jericho used to be used to worship something else. They worship the evil. They sacrifice their children. They do all kinds of idolatry. But when they come to the point where they, they remember those things, it's, it's a very great, wonderful uh, declaration that that land that they are in today it belongs to the Lord. That land that they take possession, Jericho and Ai, is to serve for the kingdom of God. And also is to remind them, those moments is so precious. We have those moments today in the age of the New Testament. 
We have seen how Jesus Christ he came and he gave his life. He shed his blood. He do so many things in our life today. They did things that uh, we just, without the blood, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, our relationship won't be even perfect. This is what it is. The law, it doesn't play a big role in the New Testament anymore. There's the grace of God. The thing that God himself takes upon himself so that we can have a better life. Israel now publicly worship and proclaim her faith in the true God, one true God in that land. I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves where we come from and who we are. This is a way just to remind people because sometimes we forgot so quick. When we are serving the Lord, things are happening during the day, during the week. We forgot, we, we forgot to pray. We forget to, to, uh, to do all the exercise, the spiritual exercise. But we have to remind ourselves. This is what they do here is a reminder. Say that God allow us. This land from this day on will be worshiping the Lord and not the sacrifice for anything else. Amen? So uh, verse 33 for 35. Then all the Israelites, foreign na native born alike, along with the elders, officers, and judge, were divided into two groups. One group stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and the other in the front of the Mount Ebel. Each group faced the other, and between them stood the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Lord Covenant. Those moments as a moment of worship. As a moment of worship. Then Joshua read to them all the blessing and the cursing Moses had written in the book of the instruction. People need to know that. You know, you do the you follow the commandment of God. You put the word in practice, it's always gonna have blessing. But if you don't follow, you ignore the word of God and they keep doing things that the pagan is doing, they always have consequences. But thank God for Almighty God. Thank God for the age we are living today. That God keep calling everyone. He said that, call me and I will respond to you. No matter where you are, no matter how your situation might look like, call me. I am your father. You are in the trouble, you're in a situation difficult, call me and I'm going to respond to you. Be able to call the Lord Jesus Christ. We call that prayer. You call the Lord, he will respond to you. The word, the book of instruction. We see how the Bible said that they have a half of the people and half of the people stayed in one mountain and another one in another mountain. And all they are valley between, that's where. Why they choose that place? They choose that place because they speak louder. Moses, he looked, they landed, the promised land, but he couldn't go. So now they are staying in the position where they can look at it where they can, the rest of the land they're going to take. It's just like uh, the, our vacation, we, I went to the Acadian and the man, Acadian uh, uh, parking. And, and you see, you go to the mountain, you go there, you can see all the valley. You can see everything. So beautiful. I mean, you feel like you want to fly, but you can't do that. But it's just so great to see all those places you can you just feel like you want to enjoy it God's way of doing things is always special you, that's why we need to be tuned in the power of the Holy Spirit when you align with Almighty God he'll always will speak through you once you give your life to Christ the Holy Spirit is already inside you he's already nagging you he's already telling you things you just learn you have to learn to listen to his voice. Amen? Learn to listen to the voice of God. Rejoicing in God's provision. God, with God, everything is possible. 
With him, everything is possible. Do not let yourself be beaten down by the, the wave how this culture is going. They will discourage you. They will tell you that things is not possible. And uh, there are reasons for that. Our culture praising, they can praise things when they see with their own eyes. They want to be convicted because we, are age, we live in the age of reason. So when we live in the age of reason, nobody walk by faith anymore. If it's not, I feel I cannot see with my own eyes, why well, believe it? But God, that's not the way God is teaching us to live our life. He said that live by faith. Faith is the substance of things that you do not see, the evidence of things you do not see is there. But by faith, because that gift of the spirit that's inside you is telling you that that thing is real. You don't, you don't see it, it's real. That's why I'm making some, somebody who have a faith speak things to somebody and say, he's so crazy. Yes, crazy for the Lord. You might look at him like he's crazy, but the person is crazy for the Lord. So we have to be able to give thanks to the Lord. We have to be able to commit our life, renew our life to the Lord, because every day is a day of renewing our soul to him. God wants you to abide in him. He wants you to come to him because he loves you and he doesn't want you to separate yourself from him. This is the only way that connection can become a reality in your life. Are you in a position to worship the Lord the way he intended from you? Worshiping, is, it might look like a word, but it's so deeper, it's so powerful. Everything you do in life is a worship. You serve people, Somebody that you serve is a worship. The people that you just help somewhere is a worship. Your finances you gave to the church, your tithe, your offering is a worship. Everything you do in life is always worship. Are you ready to worship the Lord? You know, this life, we, 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 we rely so much on something else instead to rely on God. But my prayer is we learn from this day on. Even though God brings things, those things or people in our life, he expects us to rely on him first. If you can rely on God first, it will direct you your path and your step to those people who are around there who are going to help you through it. God always use somebody to help. We need to be aware also of the warning as well as the blessing. They are blessing, it's also they are cursing out there. That's why listen to the Holy Spirit is very important. Proverbs 10, verse 17. He is the way of life that kept instruction, but that refused report error. So if we can keep the instruction of God in our life and meditate on it all the time, you will see the fruit come out of that. The Proverbs 12, 1, to learn you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate corruption. Love, love. We all call, we say love. God says, if you love me, do what I tell you to do. So the Bible says, so clearly, if you love, you must love discipline. It's challenging. This is because it doesn't make your feeling look good. You know, you don't feel good, but God said, that's the way. I can walk through you and you. So I pray God to help us to, to come over all this thing. In the Proverbs 15, the air that hear the reproof of life abide among the wise, that refuse instruction despise his own soul, but he that hear reproof getting understanding. So all this is about prepare your heart. God have a best in your life. He have a best for all of you. Prepare your heart and receive him. 
We can chase about anything in this world, but we are not going anywhere. We will waste our time. But you chase about God, you will reap life. And you will reap your blessing will be the blessing to others. So blessing is always a good thing because you will impact people's life. But if it's not working well for you, it hurts everybody. So our prayer is that God gives always another chance. I pray this morning that that chance will be us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word and I praise you. I thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. And I thank you that every day you give us something fresh and new. God, I just ask you to bring us to that level, to have a strong relationship with you, to really have a hope that we have a second chance in this life. In Jesus' name, amen. For those who are watching, I want to lead you if you have not received Jesus Christ in your life. Because this life is about Jesus. You have to receive him. Jesus has an eternal gift for you. And also, once you receive God in your life, everything becomes to have a difference in your life. So I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. This morning, I confess my sin unto you. And I ask you to forgive me for all I have done. Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who repeat this prayer. I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray for your love, your kindness. Be abiding on those people. Bless them and strengthen them in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God is good.